Welcome back. It's time now for Media Watch, which I'm joined by James Creedon here in the studio. Hello, Good James. Evening, now, we're going to begin with uh, the Israel-Gaza conflict, one of the biggest stories of the week in the last yes. uh, a couple of months, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and a couple of articles that you've picked out that show just how difficult it is for journalists to be um, objective when they're covering this story. That's right. I think it's it's a difficult one uh, for journalists to cover. There is it's such a sensitive story that there is always a, an effort to appear, I think, as impartial as possible. Two articles that I found in the story that I think illustrate um, how difficult it is. One is by the Al Jazeera, one of the Al Jazeera correspondents in uh, the Middle East, Sherine Tadros. She says covering this Gaza war is very difficult from the inside. She points out that you know there is an effort to be objective but it isn't a balanced situation. So you're trying to be balanced about what is actually an unbalanced display of force, the Israeli army obviously having more than Hamas in terms of weapons or, or sophistication of weapons. Uh, she says, as a result of that, you see uh, certain correspondents, she points out one situation, for example, where uh, uh, they were the, the correspondent was throwing back to the studio and uh, she said, as Palestinians call it, the Israeli siege on Gaza. So in an effort to appear as neutral as possible, she was saying that the Israeli siege was what the Palestinians call it, when in fact it is an Israeli siege on Gaza. The, the territory is under siege by sea and by land, so that's just a fact. So I suppose some, sometimes the facts get lost in the in a bid to appear impartial. Now, uh, at the New Statesman, there's this article uh, by Alan Johnson. Now, he is the editor of Fathom for a deeper understanding of Israel in the region. Now, he, I suppose... One of the greatest criticisms of Israel is uh, this criticism that the, the strikes are disproportionate. He says, but look, war is always about disproportionate strikes. He says, you know, asymmetry is part of war. It's not a tit-for-tat situation. If, you, if a rocket hits you, you're going to fire back perhaps disproportionately. So this claim that perhaps media coverage is disproportionate or because the military action is disproportionate is null and void from the beginning because, well, that's just the nature of war. And also he points out that you're forgetting that Hamas wants to, you know, does not want the, ter the state of Israel to exist at all and has 12,000 stockpiles of rockets uh, which they hide in civilian populations. So as you can see, really, depending on what article you read, you're getting a very different picture of what's going on in uh, the Middle East, it really depends on uh, your position, whether uh, you're, I suppose, pro-Israel or pro, um, uh, pro-Palestinian mm. or, 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 or trying to strike that middle ground. And that much harder, of course, because what they're saying is in print and it stays there and each word can be scrutinised. So definitely a, a tough, a tough uh, thing to do to cover Absolutely. that war in the print media. Now we're going to go to uh, the latest on the UMP yes. uh, here in France, which of course has been locked in this extremely embarrassing, rather surreal, uh, what some people are calling civil war. That's um, right. It's, it's been... It actually, but there's been war in the Middle East. There's been war in headlines in Paris this week. Uh, it, but it's talking about the right-wing UMP party. Civil war, in fact, the UMP, or the Le Monde, uh, headlined on it this week. Um, you've got François Fillon here pictured on the left of this Atlantico article, of Jean-François Jean -François Copé on the right, and Sarkozy in the middle. Now, what this article is saying is... The re one of the reasons the leadership battle has been so bitter is that Fillon represents a different current in the right wing to Jean-François Copé, who represents, I suppose, a slightly more right wing poaching far-right votes, in fact, than Fillon, who would be seen as more of a moderate. Sarkozy's big success was he managed to straddle those two currents of the French political right, mm. and what they call Sarkozyisme, uh, or Sarkozy's sort of appeal, is now absent, and that is one of the reasons we're seeing this fragmentation of the UMP party. So that's one angle today. Now, one person who's come along to try to save the party from this chaos is Alain Juppé, former foreign minister. He's going to moderate uh, this current standoff between Copé and Fillon over the next two weeks. Now, actually, the Le Figaro has asked in a poll, would Alain Juppé be a good boss of the UMP party, seeing as these other two don't seem to be able to get on with each other. 75% said yes. Now, mm. he was one of the founders of the UMP party. He's a, seen as a party grandee. So actually, some are saying maybe, you know, instead of moderating, he should just do the job himself, right? And coming from Le Figaro, that's really significant, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. It's which, a core base of, of UMP supporters. That's right. That's right. Now, you're seeing a lot of this online as well, uh, Tom. People tearing up their UMP cards or putting them up for sale online, right? That's uh, Le Bon Coin, which is a bit like... Uh, Le, which is a bit like um, eBay, isn't Cra it? That's right. Mm. Uh, or Craigslist. And you have... Where is it? People also ripping... Uh, tearing them up or, uh, or cutting them up with their scissors and putting those photos online. Another person said here... This is a, a, a Figaro editor... Uh, that a UMP boss admits that lots of membership cards are being sent 
back to head office with insults written on them. So the real risk here actually is a disengagement from the UMP party by the members and perhaps even a disengagement from French politics generally. Remember back in 2008 the same thing happened in the, in the Socialist Party. There was this bitter leadership battle and in fact v accusations on either side of voting fraud. So here you have the UMP party and the Socialist Party within four years who, who have had these internal elections to, uh, to choose a leader with voting fraud in both. What does that say about the integrity of the political class in France? Not a lot. And indeed, Yvon uh, Riffol, who is a, um, a columnist for Le Figaro, says exactly that in this article, that uh, the civ civil society is now confronted with the the, I suppose, lacking, the, disc the discrediting of its politicians. Mm, well, I can imagine uh, François Hollande thinks Christmas has come rather early this year with that <laughs> debacle in the UMP. That's Thank it. you very much Thanks, indeed, John. James Crean. Let's get a check now of what's making waves online. Our daily date with cyberspace web news starts right now.